Folks, welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. I'm your host, Conrad Cushman, being joined today by Hubbard Wrestling Weekly, the founder, the CEO, head of creative, the man, Sean Hubbard. What's good, Sean? What up, man? Yo, listen, Conrad, you already know what it is. Um, it's a blessing, man. Uh, a lot of people don't know and don't understand why I talk the way I talk. It's a blessing. It's a gift. It's an honor. But it really is, man. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks for having me. Listen, we're about to get into WrestleMania 38, a two-night extravaganza. We're going to have all the rundown, the previews, everything that's going on with the show, the rumors, stuff surrounding it. We'll get into all of that. Yes, sir. And it's going to be very interesting to hear your thoughts as well in the comment section. Please make sure you give this a retweet, send this out, share it with somebody. And uh, we're going to get into this intro and then we'll uh, get into some WrestleMania talk. Let's go. Now, never forget, the podcast is sponsored by Manscaped. If you guys go to manscaped.com, put in our promo code EPW Show, you guys can save 20% and get yourself some free delivery. That lawnmower 4.0 does wonders. Look at Marshawn Lynch right here. He knows what's up. He's got it. He's ready. He's talking to mini Marshawn Lynch in this picture. He <laughs> knows the deal. Put in our promo code EPW Show and save 20% off and get free delivery. Also, if you love pro wrestling as much as we do, because there's a lot of it this weekend, go to yeah. powerslam.tv and put in the promo code EPW Show. You get one free month of independent pro wrestling on us. Check out the indie scene if you've never done it before. Why not do it for free? Use our promo code EPW Show to do that. Now, some of you guys know Sean because you see him in the comment section often. Sean, I'm going to need you to let, let the people know where they can find your podcast. There. I want to get this out the way early. Let yeah, them know what you get, got going on. It's about to get ugly, bro. You know what it is. Man. It's about to get real, real ugly. Um, HubbardWrestlingWeekly.com, you know what I'm saying? That's that's where we that's where we reside, obviously, Hubbard Wrestling Weekly on YouTube. Um, the TikTok is really popping right now. I'm at 1.6 million views on TikTok. For the hashtag Hubbard Wrestling Weekly, make sure you check me out. Um, a lot of love, man. Shout out to my parents, shout out to my girl, shout out to Six Pack all day. You already know what it is, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Hubbard Wrestling Weekly.com. But right here, we are right here and right now with EPW. That's what it's all about. Let's get it now. I know some of you guys are wondering, where's Narcolepsy Boy 94? He, you said he was going to be on the show, you promoted him on it. He's going to WrestleMania, and he had to take off a little bit early for this. So I'm not mad at the player. He's going to be there. He should be calling in with some live coverage is what he should yeah. be doing. But he's out having fun. So wish you a safe trip, Malik. Have fun with that, brother. And shout out to the rest of the six-pack. Let's see who is in the live chat, who is here talking with us. We got Ray from Respect the Podcast, uh, excuse me, Respect the Craft Podcast, saying, you're what's good, Ray? Yes. Uh, yeah. Chad is also in the house joining us. Chad Schrader, what's going on, brother? Uh, who else? Azan, chanting EPW. <laughs> Rob yelling well to us. Uh, are you saying well to me, or are you saying well for a different reason, good sir? I'm confused. Because you because you know you know what we have on the podcast. Now I know you've listened before, Sean. Yeah. You you know the favorite well. No, I, I get it. I get it. Well, it's the big show. Everybody's favorite soundboard. And hopefully Derek's listening because I know he just shook his head. Mm -hmm. um, Melinda Ford. Melinda, how are you? Good to see you in here, Melinda. Thank you for joining us. Um, Rob said, can't forget the sponsors. Never, never, never. 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 <laughs> can't forget the Bev, Rob. You know how it goes. Matt yeah. Lopez in the house. What's good, Matt? Um Mox versus Biff was awesome. All right, all right. Connor's in the house as well. What's good? Connor, what up, man? Um, let's see here. Ace saying what up to Sean as well. What's, What's good, fun? Ace? Modding it up in the chat. Uh, Suzuki is wrestling on ROH Super Card of Honor. I did see that. And they've also added Ninja Mac versus Tully Blanchard's Mystery Man. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. We got a lot to get into, but we got we can't waste any time. WrestleMania is here. Um 
And before we do, I, I kind of want to just jump into the Hall of Fame stuff real quick, Sean. Just get your thoughts on these people. I don't have graphics for this. This is what was holding us up before the start of this. Um, for some reason, I can't get the graphics to load. Why? I couldn't tell you guys. But we know who's the centerpiece around this year's show. It is the man known as The Undertaker. He is on your screen right now. Um, no matter what you think of him, The Undertaker's legacy in pro wrestling is one that I don't think we will ever see someone be able to replicate again, um, just showing how times have changed and everything. But, Sean, I wanted to get your thoughts on The Undertaker being the headliner for the Hall of Fame this year. You know, it, it's really an open and shut case. Um, for me, there's been a lot of debate about whether or not he's top six or seven. He is in my top six or seven to ever lace a pair of boots. Um it was just a matter of when he retired. Whenever he decided to hang it up, the following year he was going to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, it kind of worked out a little bit later than, than it would have because of the 2020 pandemic and everything like that. But he's right where he deserves to be. Undertaker is is no less, no less than a top six or seven competitor to ever live. And um, this is well-deserving. Much respect to, uh, to, to the Undertaker. For sure, for sure. Um... Let's see here. Melinda, not good. M Melinda, prayers up to you. Keep your head up. If you need something, reach out. Let us know. Um, I, I saw that you had mentioned that in another stream. So Press praying up. that you get healing. Uh, Jason Peace also in the house. What's going on, Jason? Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Matt Lopez clapping it up for Undertaker. Mm -hmm. Everyone deserves to be in this year. Uh-oh. Besides one person, I think I know who you're talking about. And I guess we'll get into that next. Azan, you're leading the conversation with us. Uh, Queen Charmel is also going into the Hall of Fame. This is the one where everybody kind of went, eh, I don't know about that one. I mean, she was with Booker T. What, what do you think, Sean? Is that is that a Hall of Fame worthy induction? Well, you, ha you have to understand that there's a lot that goes into the Hall of Fame in WWE. You have to also consider it the WCW Hall of Fame as well. And, and she was one of the inaugural uh, Nitro Girls, which was a big thing for WCW. Um, obviously, she was the valet of, of, um, of Booker T, her husband. Um, she was also the valet, uh, the valet for, um, for uh, the former world television champion, the artist formerly known as Prince Iakea. She's done a lot of things, you know what I'm trying to say? So it's not as if she is undeserving. Um, it's a little bit eyebrow raising. It's not as eyebrow raising as the ridiculousness of um, certain people being in the Hall of Fame, <coughs> Bella Twins. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll talk about that another. I had a little cough, a little little tickle. Um, but um, Charmel, Charmel being in there doesn't anger me. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. That's fact. And, and Rob looks like he's agreeing with you. He said one thing I'll say about this year's Hall of Fame class is there's no slouches or afterthoughts. Charmel's contributions behind the scenes are nothing to scoff at. But Cindy Lauper and Miss Elizabeth need their due. And I do think that Miss Elizabeth and Cindy Lauper definitely need to go in. Yes, sir. Um, moving on with who else is getting put in. We got Vader finally going in. Uh, it's time. It's time. It's Vader time. If you didn't love Vader appearing on like Boy Meets World, he was Frankie's dad on Boy Meets World. I loved it. Vader's the man, bro. If you haven't seen some of his classics, Sean, is there any matches you would recommend to go back for people to watch for Vader if they're just trying to get pumped for the Hall of Fame for tomorrow? I certainly would. I would definitely advise the Great American Bash 92 where he took the title from Sting. Um, I would definitely advise in a losing effort, but a classic match, 1993 Starcade, where he lost to Ric Flair when Ric Flair's career was on the line for the World Championship. It was, uh, it was a, a match for uh, Ric Flair's career and the WCW World Championship. Um... One thing, I will, I'm going to talk about how we got robbed of a particular match. Um, 1994, um, 1994, Ravishing Rick Rude on the verge of a face turn. It would have been the first face turn of his uh, career when he was going to defend the WCW International World title against Ric Flair, excuse me, against Vader at Slamboree 1994, all the vignettes, all the promos had been taped and ready to go all the way up until the Saturday night before the show. But little did we know that Ric Flair had an inoperable back injury that took place in Japan when he faced off against Sting. 
Google it if you're not too squeamish, and that ended his career. But Rick Rude was literally on the verge of his first ever face turn, which would have led to a, I think would have been an epic, um, an epic feud with Vader. Vader, in my opinion, the second greatest big man to ever do it. So big shout out to Vader. God rest your soul. Yeah, and if you don't know, Vader was a monster in Japan as well. You you just have to check out Vader's WCW run. Don't just look at the WWE stuff. He was really something to behold. Yes. Um, next up, we got a tag team going in. The Steiner brothers, one I didn't think we would see for a while. I, I'm shocked, but I'm happy to see it. I mean, we got Braun Breaker in NXT. I can't be mad at uh, the dog face gremlin and the, the big bad booty daddy. <laughs> big Papa Pump going in, man. I can't be mad. All the freaks care about my pinks. Yo, yeah. Scott yeah. Steiner got to come out with a tiger on Nitro. Like, oh, there is God. no greater, like, thing you could do. I love the Steiner brothers, man. One of the best tag teams of all time, I think. Most definitely. Most definitely. You got to give a big shout-out to the Steiners. That goes back to my earlier point, Conrad, about how this is also the WCW de facto Hall of Fame. Um, Because ninety percent of um, the Steiner brothers' um, contributions have been in WCW slash NWA. I will say this though: I was there when Scott Steiner debuted at Madison Square Garden in two thousand two at the Survivor Series. I was there, and that was one of the most epic. I don't know how some people might agree, disagree, but I loved his debut. It turned out it would be his only shining moment in the company. That's pretty sad. His debut in 2002 at the Survivor Series, make sure you look at it on the network, was absolutely phenomenal. Unfortunately, it became his only moment in the company that actually was relevant. But of course, for his WCW contributions, it's an easy fix. And Rick Steiner was awesome as well in WCW. I don't think he ever made it to WWE except for that short stint in um, in 1993. Yeah, 93-94. They had a good feud. They even wrestled PCO, a young PCO when he was in the Quebecers. So check out the Steiner stuff. Some of their best matches, too. I'm trying to think of some good ones. Like, I think they wrestled Sting and Great Muda, Sting and Luger. You, you'll find some classics against Doom as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Ron Simmons and Butch Reed. The, the Steiners got bangers, man. The Outsiders, Harlem Heat. It goes on and on and on. Yes, uh, check them out. Uh, and last but not least, Shad Gaspar is getting the Warrior Award. And I think Shad Gaspar 100% deserves this. Um, nothing but love for that brother, man, for uh, the sacrifice that he made uh, for his son. And we all wish he was here, but I'm glad to see him being honored uh, this weekend as part of WrestleMania. Truly, truly missed. Um, obviously, his in-ring career was good. But he, as a human being, and the sacrifice that he made as a father is, is something that both you and I, and I'm sure you know all the fathers out there, can definitely understand and appreciate. Um, God rest his soul, and very classy move on WWE's part um, to bless this, this, uh, this young man um, after he's, his life has been unfortunately cut short with this uh, Warrior Award. It's much deserved and, and very classy. That is true. Uh, we're getting to some comments that we'll get into our predictions for this show. Melinda Ford said we need some Steiner math. Well, if you do half, 50% <laughs> man, and then my opponent's 25%, and then that's 75, my carry the two. and oh, yeah. <laughs> Fat asses. <laughs> Scott Steiner is great. Um, Ray said them giving him a live mic is uh, pretty pretty scary. And Ray, I, I detect no lies, good sir. That is a uh, a pretty scary thing. Azan right. says the uh, Steiner brothers are Motown proud. They are. They are. They always rock the Michigan jackets. Definitely. Um, Rob said Vader had some bangers in Japan after WWE. Wish we could have got Vader versus Brock in the early 2000s. Mm. Could you imagine? Wow. That slugfest. Uh, people are saying Miss Elizabeth definitely deserves to be in. Vader in WCW was a beast, Matt Lopez says. He said took out Matt Hardy version one and Christopher Nowinski, Raw and SmackDown fighting over Steiner as a hot free agent. That's what I'm talking about right there. That was some good stuff. Uh, Vader versus Cactus Jack was pretty physical AF. Um, Mark Reviews, what's going on, Mark? Uh, What's up, everything pro wrestling? I'm in the house for a little bit. Let's talk mania for sure. We're about to get into that. Uh, rename the Warrior Award. Um, Hellwig was trash. I mean, a lot of people have said name it after Shad Gaspar. I'd be down with that too. 
Um, you could have multiple of them. Rick Steiner was my main in revenge. And Scott to this day is the biggest pro wrestler I've ever met. Uh, yeah, he is. Scott Steiner is actually really nice when you meet him. I've met him before. Oh, that's what's up. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have guessed that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, he's a nice dude. Um, I'll tell you the story another time, guys. When he embarrassed all the women in Buffalo. Now you know I'll tell it now. You know what? It's we got to honor him now. Scott Steiner was in TNA and he was a heel at the time. And you know some wrestling fans go to the show they don't know. It was at the baseball park outside, and he said. Girls, I need some help putting this oil on. Who wants to come in the ring and rub Big Papa Pump down? Line up at the gate. And they all lined up in front of security. So he was really having girls get up. And then he was like, all right, now you're going to let them through one at a time when I tell you to. And the guy at security goes over to the gate. And literally, he goes, where are we at tonight? And someone was like, Buffalo. And he was like, we're in Buffalo. No Buffalo skanks are getting to touch me. Oh, you sit back down greatest heel heat ever and i met him the next day and he was like that was pretty funny wasn't it wow. <laughs> great wow. heat. he knew what he was doing that's get people riled up and he and he was talking about like stuff for his house when i met him he was cool such that's a nice what, dude that's what's up uh j hubs in the house give me a shell yeah what's going on that's the fishing line shark boy baby uh matt lopez said giving sky center a live mic should be interesting we got the pro wrestler shoot in the house was good jesse and james i appreciate you uh, don't worry about just getting off work, bro. You're good. Uh, I like to see Scott and Rick come out with Braun on Saturday. That would be great as well. That'd be great. But let's talk some. Uh, let's talk some WrestleMania Night One here. Now I've tried here's, to put here's what I want to in there, bro. I'm really excited about this. Like honestly, like my opinions, and I'm sure your opinions. Like this WrestleMania is going to go down as one of the most controversially booked shows ever. There's a lot of eyes on this, and I think it's going to tell a lot about the future of the company and their strengths, their weaknesses, their opportunities, and their threats all in one. That's a SWOT analysis for you guys, if you didn't know. So we got WrestleMania. How have you been feeling about the build to this show, Sean? I think the build has been cool for the main event, obviously. Um, I think they took it up a notch with the Bianca and Becky storyline. I think that was really surprisingly good, but... There's so many things I'm disappointed about, man. We're talking about a 14 or 15 match uh, weekend, and I'm just not fired up the way I should be about WrestleMania. They've done a good job with Brock and Roman, especially this is the third time around at WrestleMania. They've managed to make me interested. So good good for them on in that regard. They've managed to keep me interested for more reasons than one. We'll get into that in a minute regarding Bianca and, um, and Becky. But other than that, I, I just... You know, it seems like a SmackDown to me with a world title match at the end. You you could you could be right about this. So I'm looking at this, and night one looks better than night two. So let's start with night one. Let's start with the first match that I've got written down here. We got Logan Paul in the Miz versus Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. They tease like the Mysterios were possibly gonna break up for a while. And now we're here with the Miz and Logan Paul. What do you, what do you got in this one, Sean? What, what do you I think? Have, I have the Mysterios losing for the exact reason that you just talked about. Um, do, can I bring the people uh, down memory lane for five minutes? Be my guest. Okay. So the year is 1998, 97 going into 1998. The Steiner brothers going into the Hall of Fame um, were having some issues. They were having some some problems. And it was clear on TV, WCW Saturday Night, Monday Nitro, that they were just not getting along the way they should be. Just kind of some incidental things where they sat up here and, um, you know, come some mishaps in the ring. They would still win their matches, but they just were not getting along as they should. Um, and it went away. It went away. And before Super Bowl, Super Bowl 98, about two weeks out, it seemed like they had fixed everything. There were no more issues. There were no more problems. They went through two weeks of television with no issues. And it was almost forgotten that they ever had problems to begin with. They got to Super Brawl, and Scott Steiner turned on his brother. What relevance is that compared to what we're talking about right here and now? The Rey Mysterio dominant dynamic was really cool when it looked like they were going to break up. Over the past month or so, it has not been the case. It seems like they are right back on the same page. Sound familiar? I'm saying that it's all going to go down at WrestleMania. I think Logan Paul and the Miz win because of a Dominic or Ray mistake. 
And I think Dominic, out of nowhere, turns on his father. I think WrestleMania is where it happens. Okay, okay, that's that's some big talk. I'm going to go opposite of Sean on this prediction already. I'm going to go with Ray and Dominic get the win. I think WWE's got cold feet on doing this. I think they don't want to. Ray nope. Mysterio is one of your top baby faces, and I think they don't want the people to react differently to him. I think that they've been doing this buildup, and I've noticed that when Miz was trashing his uh, city, he Logan Paul wasn't feeling that a little bit. He was like, he wasn't, he wasn't. and he was like, oh, I like the Mysterios. He's been just saying the opposite stuff. So I feel like we're going to get Miz losing, but Miz is going to give Logan Paul his WrestleMania moment after the match. I could see them doing that, maybe with a little KO punch. It's WWE, man. This is just, they've written this for years. Like, yeah, we got this. I'm, um, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, the Steiner Brother reference, they it was clear that they were not on the same page for months. Then it went away. It went away. It was almost forgotten on, on WCW television. It seemed as if the Steiner Brothers had figured it out. And then the big turn at Super Brawl. I'm saying that this is a setup that the Mysterios are seemingly right back where they need to be, just in time. Wendy, what up, girl? Um, just in time for them to break up at WrestleMania. Shout out to Winner joining us in the chat. Um, we got people saying they're disappointed. No IC in U.S. title matches. Yeah, that's kind of sad. No, it's beyond sad, bro. It's beyond sad. Well, the IC title hasn't been defended on a pay-per-view in a year. I don't know if anybody's thought about that, but this makes it a year. It's disgusting. It's disgusting what they've done to that historically significant championship. It's disgusting. I'm 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 pissed about that. Yeah, I'm right there with you on um how, how they've been treating the title. Uh Melinda thinks Dom turns on Ray as well. I see Logan Paul turning on Miz, Azan says. Uh let's get into the next match. Now, this one. I don't think anyone's going to be able to, to see what happens here. We've got Happy Corbin going up against uh, Drew McIntyre. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, even, I, I, I'm not even putting a graphic up for that. What do you think? Oh, um, I'm up? sorry. I, I'm, yeah, I, I had to... What purpose is this match being on? This is this should be on Heat, and Heat's not even a show anymore. This is stupid. This is a filler. This is a filler match on Wrestle Freaking Mania. Um, Drew's gonna win, but who cares? This is stupid. It's sad, man. It makes you wonder what happened to the Drew McIntyre that we had at WrestleMania 36. Like it was only two years ago. But I, I guess you're trying to build up some other people in the meantime. Uh, I, I'm, tr I'm trying to come up with excuses here, bro. Um, yeah, Drew wins, right? Drew wins. On? Drew wins. And we, and we move on saying this. Drew and, 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 um, and Happy Corbin instead of an Intercontinental or U.S. title match. I'm not going to lie, man. I really – I miss Broke Corbin. I liked him a lot better. Yeah, I feel you on that too. Uh, let's see here. Bro is disgusting. Agreed. A lot of people are upset about these titles. Remember when Tyler finally embraced Sandman and then Raven attacked? Ray's going to do the same to Dominic like Sandman should have done. It's funny. <laughs> Terrible. Sleeper match. Madcap's turning on Happy Corbin. I, like I said, I miss Broke Baron Corbin. He was better at Broke Baron Corbin, in my opinion. Uh, Madcap is growing on me. I No, I think Baron's the man out of them. Baron Corbin just needs something solid to do that we can actually sink our teeth into. Agreed. They just keep giving him stuff where it's just like, yeah, dude. And if you, I, if you have like a mid card, a mid card level character, they've given him nothing but mid card level characters. <laughs> Rob, yes, I agree. I agree. <laughs> um, the next match, we got the SmackDown tag team titles here. Where are we with this? We got the Usos up against Shinsuke Nakamura, and uh, I would scream like him, but I can't even do that. Rick Boogs. Nakamura. I can't do it. <laughs> my, my voice will be done just like that, bro. I could not. Um, what do you think for this matchup here, Sean? I mean, what, what do you think of the tag? The tag team scene is pretty abysmal on SmackDown. I'm not going to lie. It, it is, and but but there was a, a remedy for this. If you can do Brock versus Roman 100, then you could do Usos versus New Day again. 
That's the only matchup that would have made sense. That's the only matchup that's WrestleMania worthy. They continue to be uh, get well soon, Big E. They continue to be the best tag team on on in WWE. Uh, honestly, I, I'm not a big fan of RK Bro. We'll get to that in a minute. But the Usos and the New Day are the two best teams in the company. It's WrestleMania, and they're both on the same show. It's it's perfectly logical to me that they could have put something together. All you got to do is maybe throw a ladder in there, and it would have been beautiful. But we have Shinsuke, who we all know how WWE has dropped the ball on him. And we have Rick Books, who's a, a funny, nice character, but certainly not WrestleMania-worthy at this stage in his career. The Usos are going to win. And, and and it doesn't really move me in any way, you know, one way or another. Yeah, I feel like the Usos are going to win. It's weird because Nakamura was the champion for the better part of that intercontinental title reign that we're talking about where it wasn't even defended. Right. Um, crazy. J-Hub said it's crazy. I thought Drew was going to smack down and challenge Roman. I think he is still. I think now they're trying to build guys up to challenge Roman. And they're trying to get Drew back on that train a little bit. And they're trying to elevate others while doing it. Good points, though, J-Hub. Uh, Wes is also in the house. What's going on, Wes? Uh, Drew were out as welcome with me a while ago, so go Corbin. Uh, Queen of the Indies has joined us. What's going on, Queen? Thank you so much for hopping in here, Tiff. Um, Usos retain next. Uh, yeah, man. Um, I mean, do you see that already, bro? I mean, you're an educated guy. You're, you're a student of the game just like I am. That's two matches back-to-back -back where we're like, you know, uh, you know, Drew wins, Usos win next. Yeah. This yeah. is Wrestle, this is WrestleMania, bro. This is Wrestle freaking mania. Well, going back to the old days, they used to have those filler matches too. You know yeah. that. You know what? You know what? You know what? Texas Tornado versus Dino Bravo, you know, uh uh Hercules Hernandez and Virgil. But you, it, it, but you know what? It doesn't bother me as much as this. It doesn't bother those matches didn't bother me as much as these do. Shinsuke and Boobs versus the Usos is terrible. And Corbin versus Drew is worse. All right. Let, let's see if we can find something to sink our teeth into please, here. Please. Let's talk the Raw women's title match. Uh, we got Bianca Belair versus Becky Lynch. Now, some people may say WWE didn't plan this long term. Some people are going to say this is a happy accident. Some are going to say, yes, they did plan this since SummerSlam. Whatever it may be. We, we've done the right thing is all I'm going to say. I'm happy that we're at this point and we've done the right thing. There's only one more thing needed to do the right thing. Oh, and I didn't pick for that last match. Give me Usos as well. Okay. Um, the For this one, though, the story's been pretty good, right? I mean, from the losing, Becky's been the most dominant champ. She's always been champion since WrestleMania 35 while being active. They, they've been trying to tell that story with it. They did something scary this week. I got nervous when I saw her pull out the scissors to cut hair. And I was like, you do not, you cannot do that to Bianca. If she loses the braid or you cut it, you've ruined her. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, I agree. Um, For this one, listen, my answer is simple. I've been saying this for months. Bianca Belair has to get the championship back. I don't know how the people are going to react to this in a couple months, but I think they will pop if she can beat Becky Lynch on the big stage here. This is your show. Do I do I have do I have the floor? You got it, bro. I cannot express to you how much that Bianca Belair has to win this match. I, I cannot express to you enough how serious and real life this is to me. You know, Kofi Kingston versus Brock, the first SmackDown on Fox. Bianca and Becky at SummerSlam. There have been things that have happened that have just not been right from an operational and humanistic standpoint. We all know this is predetermined stuff, but the, the politics in the back are very, very real. They almost, they could have derailed Bianca's entire career by what they did to her at SummerSlam. Now they have brought it full circle. They have got Bianca to the doorstep. She has to walk through it. Anything, and I'm not talking about a DQ or, or a count out either. There, anything short of Bianca walking out of WrestleMania 
as Raw Women's Champion would be a complete injustice. Bianca wins because Bianca has to win, period. Okay, I'm I'm with you on that, bro. 100%. It sends a horrible message if she does not win, like you said. Uh, Matt Lopez says Bianca versus Becky should be match of the night. Azan says, I'm glad Alexa is not in the Raw Women's Championship. I hope Bianca pulls a repeat, and I'm assuming he's talking about winning back-to-back manias. Right. Um, Alexa does not have a match. Like, she's not on this card, and that's left some of her fans scratching their heads. Yeah. Uh, Rob says, this could be genius if they document the fall of Becky Lynch for a calendar year after this. I think people still want to cheer Becky. They are forcing it, though, to where you... They're trying to force it as hard as they can. They really are. Becky booed, but it's it, to me, it's really not. It still doesn't work, really. She's just overly obnoxious, and we're going to get into that. I know me and you are going to have beef a little bit later on in this when we start talking about it. Hey, did Kofi ever get that rematch for the title? Sadly, no. Um, facts. Uh, Anthony, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you. Good, sir. Come on in. Let's talk some WrestleMania. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, we move on from the Raw Women's title match, and we are going to talk about the the SmackDown. Uh-oh, hold on. We got one more thought here. I like that. We'll have to shoot, Jesse. I don't think Bianca will be nearly as entertaining as Becky once she's champion, unfortunately. Bianca will win, but she just needs a fire lit under her to step up some character growth. I actually like that. I, I don't. I don't think anything other than Becky winning is uh, other than Bianca winning is acceptable. She has to win. But once she wins, I do believe there's a little tweak that needs to be done. I agree. So now this is still on night one, correct? The SmackDown women's title match as well. It is. The layout for this is so weird, bro. Different. I don't get it. I don't get it. But to to each their own, I guess. This is this is what they want to do. We can make it happen. Um, we've got Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey in this one. Um, what 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 you thinking here, man? I'm like, not I'm not as mad at, at the Ronda Rousey return as a lot of people are. I, I was mad at the moment because big shout out to Undertaker again. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I wasn't mad at, at at the Ronda return. I was mad at first because she I thought she took um. Bianca's um, Royal Rumble win that I thought was kind of going to be hers back-to-back years, but it all worked itself out on the Raw Women's title end. On the SmackDown end, Ronda's been doing good since she's been back. I I like her. Um, Charlotte is being who she's supposed to be, an annoying, overbearing heel. She's doing her job. I'm not a big fan of all the title shots. I'm not a big fan of the fact that she's up to 12 now, and it seems like they're making a concerted effort to give her 16 like her father when I don't think it's as deserved. But we are where we are. We're at WrestleMania. I think Ronda wins. I think Charlotte wins it back. I think Charlotte's going to get four or five more championships. And in order for her to do that, she's going to have to lose from time to time. And I think one of those losses come on Saturday night. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys my honest, truthful thoughts on this. Like, dude, the bill for this match has sucked. I'm not going to lie. It's been horrible. It hasn't horrible. been great, but you think it's been horrible? Horrible. Okay. Like, when they were talking about that this was going to be the main event, I agree with so many people when it was just it was just stated, like, you don't you don't deserve to be the main event on night one. And I, I stand mm-hmm. firmly behind that. It, it's not necessary for night one. Um, and in this, I, I'm not the biggest Charlotte fan of the four horsewomen. I don't know what it is with her out of all of them, but everything just feels so ah, ah and I'm just like back off. I think I think Sasha's just as good. And you see where we are right now with that. We're in a, a sad state of affairs, we'll just say, yeah. wondering why is Sasha not in a, a better position, a better spot. We, we we could be here all day arguing that stuff, but I, I don't know how to feel about this. What what do you think, Sean? I, I don't I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. I, I have a pro I have a problem with uh big shout out to Derek Hubbard. <laughs> it's my pops. Um, um big shout out. Appreciate you, Pop. Um real talk though, I don't have a problem with 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 the Rhonda dynamic. I don't have a problem with the Charlotte dynamic, but it, it needs to be taken in doses, bro. It needs to be taken in doses. Charlotte has been forced down our throat for a long time. You know, the fact that she, I still have a little, you know, resentment about the fact that she was plugged into that main event at WrestleMania 35. 
So, you know, and, and it continues to be the case. Now, I will disagree with you on one end. I thought all along that the women's title was going to be the main event because I thought that WWE was doing this two-night format in order for the women's Royal Rumble winner and the men's Royal Rumble winner to both be in main events because they won the Royal Rumble. So that was kind of, like, cool to me. That didn't bother me at all. But, I mean, again, I think Ronda wins. Um, I, I mean, are we, are we saying that we – believe that charlotte is is a little bit too much and like you know too too annoying annoying. the push is annoying okay agreed i agree with that but as far as a character is concerned even though it, it does make me want to throw up every single week charlotte's doing her job she's paid to be an annoying overbearing conceited heel she's doing her job i don't like it but it is what it is okay I, I listen. I, I can give enough of that. I just think for these two, the platform they were given. I don't know who begged for this match. I don't know who asked for this match, but you got what you wanted now. And I, I personally, I'm just gonna say it, bro. I think it's been pretty lame. It's been pretty lame what they've done thus far uh, with these two. Um, let me see here. Pro wrestling. She said, "I like their first match at Survivor Series 2018. Going up the shrug." should have been a heel i feel she wanted that that is a great point she comes out and there's just no emotion i'm just like dude you're reading lines i can feel it like just coming off of you brother brother the problem the problem with it is with this and you're like i said i can't stress this enough you're as big a student of the game as i am you study this stuff that's why we're not just fans we're journalists as well you can't have a comeback and expect to be booed nobody comes back after an extended absence who's any of any significance get and gets booed um unless it's somebody who where the fans and i think we'll talk about this later on too unless it's a situation where the fans expect somebody else and then it turns out to be somebody else if that makes any sense then that person gets booed because they're not the person that they were looking for but in the situation with ronda rousey what kind of reaction did people think they the, the, the WWE think they were, she was going to get when she came out at, at at Royal Rumble? Nobody was going to boo Ronda Rousey. Everybody was happy that she was back, and, and as they should be. Like Ronda at the Rumble was fine. Right. It's just the, it's the build. It was just the whole build up and and what they did with some of that. And you were just like, ah, oh, dude, you, you okay. got to do better than this. Okay. 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 But we'll see what happens. Maybe maybe they'll show up and impress me. I just don't see anybody coming up and saying, you know what makes me mad about you? I'm calling you out on your own show. Go ahead. What makes me mad about you is that you know this is how it works, bro. And for some reason, you got to talk more because there's something inside you that you're not saying. Why does this thing not sit well with you? There's something – talk about because. Because I, I don't that's not the Conrad I know. There's something about this set scenario that doesn't sit right with you when you haven't said it yet. Because they put these two on a platform to okay. show up and show out. We heard all, so going back to Charlotte and Becky, they're acting like they're Brett and Sean. All right, we're gonna go back to the Becky Charlotte thing. You're okay. Brett and Sean. You two are talking like you're the biggest two. Okay. You're both not even main eventing your night of WrestleMania. Cut okay. it out, okay. both of you. Okay. And I'm more invested in the Becky Lynch match than the Charlotte match. True. Why is that? That should I should not feel this way. Okay. And for Rhonda to come in and get a spot and you got rid of all these people, it's disappointing. I said it. It's disappointing. I and I was I just wanted you to unleash, man, because I felt like you were holding it in. I was holding back a little bit. <laughs> um you didn't like the parking lot fight. It was it was all right. I liked um, it. I liked it three years ago. <laughs> Mr. Hubbard, Derek Hubbard says, I think Ronda wins. Uh, Ronda can be great. She needs to mature in the wrestling business more and definitely stay off the mic. But I feel Ronda uh, doesn't need to be on the mic. Not every character needs to run promos. I, I can agree with that. Only if reason was, I'd watch Mania is for my heel. hero. If she was a heel, Paul Heyman could have been her manager. Facts. I, and I think that would be a better move. Uh, Ronda thinks she's main event in night one when we all know Austin and KO is the main event. Anthony said, my prediction, uh, Landago debuts as a baby face and helps Ray and Dom win against Miz. Oh, you must be far back. Mm. Uh, bro, Sasha uh, gets injured too much. I think she's great, but as a business, you got to go. Is Sasha injured right now? You're not injured. No. He's healthy. No. But you know what I do hear Sasha saying? What's that? I like making movies. 
you better start talking right quick. Wow. Or pew. You're going to talk yourself right off the TV. Yeah. If you smell loud when I'm cooking, <laughs> it's happened before. Yeah, Be right. smart. Um, I want Charlotte to win just because it seems like Ronda is over there. Yeah. And I also don't like Charlotte juggling the championships around. Yes. Get heated. Conrad agreed uh, about the build. And people are asking, where's Bailey? Uh, I think we'll soon we'll soon hear what happens to uh, Bailey. I, I'm hoping. I'm surprised, not, I'm surprised she's not back yet. It, it'll get there. I think it's coming eventually. Let's get into the the main event here, though, for uh, this night. The main event. <laughs> we, we've got the KO show. Kevin Owens. Woo! He's coming in with the Texas rattlesnake, bro. Whatever. What, what do you mean, whatever? Whatever. Now I'm about to get on you. So tell me. All right, how are you feeling about this? Come on, that's the bottom line. You got I, something to say. I love Stone Cold Steve Austin. I have infinite respect for him and his contribution to the business. I, I really enjoy Kevin Owens too, but it's gonna be the main event. I mean, we're speculating. We don't have a we don't have a run sheet for the show, but uh, I'm sure your sources are almost the same as mine. We both have done our research and, and it all indications say the KO show is gonna be the main event at night one. That should not be the main event of a WrestleMania. A talk show should not be the main event of WrestleMania. Now, does that mean that Bianca and Beckley should be put in that spot? No. Does that mean that uh, Charlotte and Ronda Rousey should be put in that spot? No. Which goes back to your original point, Conrad, my brother, that this rundown and this match card for these two nights is completely jacked up. Like it's just it, you know, the way they put this show together, these two nights and the the match selection has been terrible. So in that regard, I guess you have to have a talk show be the main event of WrestleMania. And obviously, Stone Cold's going to get a stunner or two, and there's going to be beer, and the show's going to go off the air with glass breaking, and that's great. But for the sake of WrestleMania, like you know, would there ever be a Piper's Pit to main event WrestleMania? God rest Roddy Piper's soul. Would the Brother Love Show main event of WrestleMania? I would hope not. <laughs> I would I would hope not as well. So I don't know. I'm not very I'm not very thrilled about that. You pick on that last match? Did we pick who who did you pick? Charlotte or Rhonda? I picked Rhonda to win. Yeah. Okay. I, I I'm gonna go with Rhonda too. I feel like they're gonna have to appease her because she's there for the long term stay. So I I'll, I'll go Rhonda as well. Um, but for this, what is this gonna be, Sean? Like this, 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 show, this shows this shows how far reaching your show gets. My mom is watching too. Big shout hey. out to my mom and my girl. And my mother says that uh, that Rhonda is going to what she say? She said she thinks she thinks Charlotte wins. She thinks Charlotte wins. Big shout out to Mom Dukes. Appreciate you. Let me. Uh oh, hold on. People, it's getting heated now. We all know the bait and switch. Yeah, that's classic WWE. Sasha doesn't get injured. Hollywood is calling. People forget Sasha started out as an actress. Uh, Stunner. Uh, they had to make two the KO show the main event because if you put it anywhere else after the car, people are gonna leave after seeing Stone Cold. They are in Texas. Oh, no, 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 nobody's gonna. Who said that? Uh, J Hub said that. J Hub, uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna show you extra respect because I like the first three letters of your, of your name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta show love for anybody whose last name is up. But listen, nobody's gonna leave a WrestleMania show. Nobody's gonna if if if. It would never happen. But if the KO show was the first thing of the night, nobody's going to leave. So I, I disagree with that. Um, you can't have a talk show be the main event of WrestleMania, man. It, it, I mean, just, just. Ugh. Sean, what's this going to be? Is this a match? It's not a match. It's not a match. What, what is, is this going to be a stunner and he's out? Or do you think they're actually going to wrestle a little bit here? No, they're going to fight. It's, kinda, it's, it's probably going to be, you know what the comparison is going to be? The thing that comes to my mind immediately, DDP and Undertaker at King of the Ring 2001. Okay. It's going to be a fight that Stone Cold wins, and it's not a real match. A little a little melee. Yeah, but that's stupid, bro. Wrestle, holy, like my mind is like blown, like. When it became apparent that this was going to be the main event by all rumors and innuendo, it pissed me off, man. This is WrestleMania. This is Hogan and Savage. This is Hogan and Andre. This is Austin and Rock. And you're going to have the KO show main event WrestleMania? Yes. And you know the deal. What's going on? You know the deal. Uh, he has come in and said, no, I see U.S. title matches. And, we've, and we're talking about. A, a, a friggin' segment, main event in the show. I get it, bro. It's I completely so understand the frustration. 
Um, people would leave WrestleMania if Corbin was in the main event, Matt Lopez said. Um, let me see here. You know how much those Mania tickets are? Not only am I staying for Mania, but I'm going to be the last one leaving taking a chair with go. me, too. I'm there leaving with go. something. There you go. Uh, funny thing is, my last name is Hubbard as well, J-Hub says. Respect, respect, respect. Okay. Um, let's see here. I, Derek Hubbard said he's going for Rhonda. Cindy is went for her last time, and Rhonda won. This time, she doesn't think she's going to win. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, my parents. Or, or was that a ooh yeah? I think it was a oh yeah. They're from that generation. Shout out to her. My girls also list uh, on this feed as well. So I told everybody to turn into EPW because EPW is popping, my brother. That's not, thank you, thank you, brother. This is why we have you on that crossover appeal. <laughs> Let's get in the night too. Let's get in the night too. We got everybody in here. We're jamming. We're rocking. Uh, I, I will say Ko's gonna eat a stunner. That we'll leave it at that for the yeah. prediction. Yeah. Um. Getting into night two, I gotta pull up my the format here so I can remember what's going on. All right, let's let's get to what WrestleMania I feel has always been all about. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Sami Zayn versus uh Jackass's Johnny Knoxville. Right. Um, Johnny Knoxville is somewhat of a, a celebrity, we'll say, and he's got a movie out. I don't know what this match is gonna be, but I know Johnny Knoxville has suffered some pretty bad injuries to the head. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have to be extra careful here, but I think Sami Zayn is gold, bro. Sami Zayn has been gold. I think he's a great character, and he's proven. Because when they first turned him heel, bro, you know me, I was the first one like, no, this is right. not gonna work. This is absolutely gonna be bad. Your first, and your first inclination was correct. No, I think Sami's done all right with this. Now it's getting a little long in the tooth. The whole conspiracy thing. Where are we going with this? I, I like him better as a babyface, I will say. I think he's a better uh, wrestler in the ring when it comes to that. But what this is what WrestleMania is about, is it not, Sean? Celebrities, wrestlers, mixing it together and trying it's to what, do something. What WrestleMania is about, in theory, it's what WrestleMania is about traditionally. But you have to put the right pieces in place for it to make sense. Last year with, with Bad Bunny, it made sense. This year is just like, bro. Like, I don't, I don't like Sami Zayn in this current incarnation. It doesn't, it doesn't feel good to me. Like, Sami Zayn is 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 very annoying, and he's not the good annoying. He's the bad annoying. And I and I and of course, I mean, to me, I think that, um, you know, Jackass comes out on top. But it's just like, bro. Like, will it really matter at the end of the day? I know it's false count anywhere. I guess that makes it a little more intriguing. But whatever. Okay. Um, Let me see here. Anthony wanted me to read his comment from before. I must have missed this. The way Vince should have booked uh, Ronda when she debuted is the way Vince should have, the way Vince booked Ken Shamrock. That it'd probably be a lot better, brother, like you said there. Um, Anything goes in this one. Johnny Knoxville is going to walk away with the victory here. He ain't coming in here to promote his movie and possibly get hurt for nothing. You know what? I'm not letting you off the hook again. I'm, this is going to be the, the Sean calls out Conrad show because I'm not, there's too much stuff that you're leaving on the table. Now I'm challenging you to explain to your millions and millions of fans. By the way, your show is popping. Look at all the comments. Big shout out. Sammy, Appreciate y'all. Sammy Zayn? Sammy, tell me what's good about Sammy Zayn. You know who's better than Sammy Zayn? You know who's more entertaining than Sammy Zayn? Chad Gable. I, I, I'm feeling Chad Gable right now. Okay. Listen, I got my list of people that I love right now. But Sammy, so. but Sammy Zayn, bro, bro. I, I do, I do. I think Sammy Zayn has come up with some very innovative things. I love the ladder match with Jeff Hardy, and he handcuffed Jeff Hardy's earlobe to the ladder. Genius, genius. Because I was like, how are they going to get out of this? And once he did that to Jeff, I was like, oh, he's got this, bro. He's he's just so great at being a slimy heel, and he always gets his, you know what I mean? And him and Brock were great doing comedy together. Things like this work. I, hear um, you. I, I just think Sammy has fit into positions that I didn't think he would fit into before. I'm like, ah, there's no way. He's funny. He can wrestle. He's good. He can work with your main eventers. He can work with your lower card guys. Sammy has been doing this for so long that he is that darn good. And that's why I respect him. And I think they trust him in there with Johnny Knoxville. And I think Johnny Knoxville and him are going to have a match. Some shenanigans are going to happen. And I think Knoxville wins. That's that's where I'm going to leave it. 
and I and I think and I think that you know that I respect you enough to to leave it alone because because of for one reason and one reason only because I respect you because I disagree with you. You're, you're getting a lot of thank yous in the chat. I don't know if it's for getting me fired up or for what you're saying about saying. Yes, AD. Like I'm trying to get this man to. There you go. That's entertainment right there. Shush. Shush. That's entertainment. Shout out to the no, but AD. Yeah, I'm trying to fire him up because it's like I know that this guy. Con, one thing, Conrad and I go back a, multi, a number of years now, and and I know when Conrad told him back. So that's the reason why I'm like, yo, this is WrestleMania, man. You know, like oh talk, your, talk your talk, bro. Hold on, I'm getting yelled at for some matches. So wait, that's that's day one too. Some of the okay, no, go no, ahead. Bridge and New Day are are definitely night two. Okay, okay. but with one thing that we did not mention because and I can't knock you for it because it's not official yet. Was Cody and allegedly Cody and Seth? Oh, I was saving that on purpose, and I oh, saw yeah, someone else wrote that, and I saved okay, it. So never mind then. But don't, yeah, don't be, don't be trying to change the format of the show in the chat. Now I let y'all talk, but can't change the format. I, I know what I'm yeah, doing. Exactly. Let this man run his show the way he wants to. <laughs> no, it's by the fans for the fans. You can call me out when I mess up because hey. sometimes there are errors. But this hey. one was on purpose, though. I tell you. There you go. Um. So you're going with Knoxville as well, I assume. Yeah, but that makes four matches now that are not WrestleMania worthy. Four. Okay, he's keeping he's keeping a counter. Yeah, right. I've been keeping a count the whole since February when this card got put together. This is the this is one of the worst WrestleMania cards of all time. Of all time, yes, oh. WrestleMania. I said one of the worst because there's always going to be WrestleMania nine, but yeah, and eleven. Yeah, eleven was pretty rough too. But there's been thirty eight. 38 WrestleManias now, right, bro? This will be 38. So it's not like we're talking about a small sample size, and this is going to go down as one of the worstly booked wrestle. Now, if all, if all of a sudden The Rock comes out and here comes Shawn Michaels and Triple H makes an appearance, you know, get well soon, and all you know, and, and Cena shows up and and you know, and Hogan does the ear thing and they bring Ric Flair back and 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 Kevin Nash comes back to do a tribute to rest in peace Scott Hall. If all this stuff happens and maybe it'll turn to the greatest WrestleMania. But on paper, on paper, this show looks weak. I think they've been doing bad builds since 31. I remember 31 feeling horrible going into it because I went on a trip the day after Mania ended. And I'm hoping they can pull something. I'm hoping a rabbit comes out of the head. Let's get Sean talking positive. Let's get into this match. <laughs> AJ Styles versus Edge. This should be a banger. This should be a banger. I'm feeling Sean, you know I'm gonna keep it a stack with you, bro. Please, always. I'm feeling I'm feeling weird about Edge's character right now. Okay. Okay. I'm they changed his music. It's all right. I mean, it's not, it's all right. But right. to change your character during mania season, eh. It's kind of a weird time to be making some moves and changes. Was Edge, some people tried to tell me Edge was stale and he's trying to freshen it up. Some people were like, oh, Edge is trying to mature his character a little bit. Mature his character? The man is old. What are we talking about? He's not at the, he's, he's not at like the beginning of his career or mid career. Wow. He's towards the end. Okay. No, I'm saying when Edge came back, bro, I was happy. Right. And I, but I'm just saying we know that he's got less matches than he did before. Right. And we have to be smart about this. But his character change and all that, it, it's kind of made me feel weird about the build to this. But I think this is this could be a really great match if we can get that AJ Styles TNA style. I wish that they could get AJ's TNA theme and have him come out to it just for this match only. Uh-huh. You could really do something different here. And uh, make it special. Like Edge tries to freak him out with the new music, and maybe AJ does something like that. Right. Um, I don't. I don't know who's winning this one though. This is a tough one to call. Let me hear your thoughts on it. Well, first of all, I think there's another crappy match on the card. No, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> that would just. Yeah, I was about to say, please do explain. No, 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 no. I, 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 I'd be silly to say that. This is the, obviously one of the best matches on the entire weekend, but um. Oh, well, see, pro wrestling shoot. You know, I, I don't want to. I'm not trying to be negative, but I'm glad some people agree with me. This is terrible. But but I was joking around about AJ and, and Edge. AJ and Edge is clearly one of the top two or three matches on the entire weekend. Um, I like Edge's heel change. I don't like the change in music. I think he's he could have been a heel uh, without changing his music. That's iconic music. And to your point, I think when you come off iconic music like that, anything else is going to make it seem a little stale. I remember when. Um, when Shawn Michaels started coming out to DX music. Shawn Michaels' Sexy Boy theme is one of the greatest of all time. 
I sang along with it every time he came to the ring. He came out to DX's music. It made me sick until I got used to DX's music, and that became iconic too. Um, I think Edge's music is dope, but I think Edge's music is not as good as the last one. Now, getting on to the character, I like I like Edge as a heel. I think his, he's done his best work as a heel. Um, AJ could not go into this match, I think, as the baby face. I mean, as the, as the heel, so they made him the baby face. Um, and also, AJ is just coming off a run with Omos where he just became a baby face, so switching him back would have made no sense. You could have had a classic face versus face match. That could have been an option. But, I mean, Edge probably went to the powers that be. Or, I mean, because I, I feel at this stage in Edge's career, he has a little bit of clout backstage. He could have been like, hey, listen, I want to switch it up a little bit. And I think this is a more sadistic edge. This is a more ruthless edge. And I think it's going to be a, a gutsy win for AJ Styles when it all comes down to it. Um, but I, I don't have a problem with Edge's new persona. I just think it was a shock. And it does come at a weird time of the year. I agree. You know what? I've made my choice on who's winning this. Okay, let's get it. I, I'm going with AJ Styles to win. Okay. I feel like he could be built up and he'll be fed later to someone else. But more on that later. But I think AJ's going to get the W here. And, I, and I'm going to go a step further. I think AJ wins as well, like I said, but I also, I'm going to take it a step further. I think the winner of this match gets a title shot. Okay. Okay. I can see that. I wish they had put a number one contendership on this, like officially. Yeah. He says Edge was stale, AF. Mm -hmm. um, we got people agreeing with Azan's statement of Edge looks like a bootleg Malachi Black. Mm. Yeah, that, that's a little rough now. Come on now. Edge was here first. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I like heel Edge, but this is rushed a rush turn just for WrestleMania. Weird timing. I agree. Uh, I think this match will probably steal the show, though. I could agree. Edge straight up impersonating Aleister Black's gimmick. Ooh, okay. I, now now I can agree with that. You know, right. the deal kind of convinced me a little bit more. That, that makes sense. Right. The music and look was a decade old. I like the new stuff. Yeah. Uh, the Edge gimmick is a mix of the Brood and the Ultimate Opportunist. That's actually pretty true. I want to piggyback off what Pro Wrestling Shoot, um, Pro Wrestling Shoot said. It would have been better timing. I think the timing would have been perfect if they did it this way. Edge, classic Edge, should have came went all the way through WrestleMania, and if Edge was going to make this heel, Edge should have been face all the way through with the regular music, same music, all the way through the match, and then after the match, if he wanted to dog out AJ. After the match, he could have done that. And then the following night on Raw, he could have came out with this new persona. Maybe we're just getting old, bro, because I was thinking the same thing. Like, that would make more sense to do it that way. I don't, I don't think we're getting old. Look, we're in our 30s, not our 50s. I think that we just think about things logically, bro. Like, you can't I mean, in a pro wrestling mind sense. Like, oh, well, definitely, you, know, you know that. We're definitely old school when it comes to pro wrestling. Yeah. Interesting. You don't change up two weeks before WrestleMania. Let, let's get into some more of these uh, interesting matchups here. Let's talk this one. I think this this is my uh, show stealer match of the night, potentially. Pat McAfee, a punter from the NFL. Shout out to Panda, too. I know Panda's trying to get on the Pat McAfee show. Make mm -hmm. sure you guys show uh, Matt, my boy Panda, some love on TikTok, man. Um, I, I believe it's Panda Love 24 x 48, if I'm not incorrect. And I apologize, Panda, if I messed up your uh, TikTok. But Austin Theory versus um, Pat McAfee should be interesting. I think Austin Theory is a future player. I think I think he's got potential to be a future player if he plays his cards right. Uh, he's got Mr. McMahon behind him. This was kind of built up with Vince going on the Pat McAfee show. and eh, a little... A little eh, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> he didn't ask the right questions out there. I wanted him to get more controversial than he did. Right. But it was it was pretty cut and dry stuff. Um, what what do you think for this matchup? You feel in theory, McAfee, is he gonna impress? I I can't stand Austin Theory. And I'm talking, I'm not I'm, and I'm not talking about the way I say I can't stand Charlotte Flair. Uh, this is that boss man. He here we go. And I'm, not, I'm not talking about the way I, I can't stand Charlotte for being an annoying heel the way she's supposed to be. I'm talking about I don't like Austin Theory. Period. I don't think Austin Theory has has it at all. Um, and I've been looking hard to try and see what some people see. I think Pat McAfee is more of a star than Austin Theory is. And if you go back to NXT Takeover where he had that match against Adam Cole, where he stole the show and shocked the world, Pat McAfee's a real athlete, former NFL player, 
I know we don't automatically think NFL when we think, you know, a super athlete when you think about punters, but he's still an athlete. He's still a professional athlete. He He's good on the microphone, as we know from watching him every Friday night on SmackDown. And he's proven against Adam Cole, one of the top wrestlers in the world. I think nobody would disagree that Adam Cole is top 15 in the world. And maybe top 20, but definitely top 20 in the world. Pat McAfee's a superstar if they build him right. To me, you know, Austin Theory is just annoying. Like, first of all, he's stealing the gimmick with the cell phone from Tyler Breeze. That's number one. Okay, he's just a, a jacked up loser scumbag to me. Like, you know, with 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 you know, he's he's good looking, but like, who cares? Like, he's just like a little pretty boy. Uh, I think the heel gimmick is forced. I think the fact that Vince McMahon's on TV with him every single week is forced. It's corny. I don't like him. I wish he was back on NXT, uh, golden, uh, golden, and, and and black, and that's not even a thing anymore. <laughs> so I'm 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 gonna make a prediction in this one. I think Theory's gonna get the win. Now I know everybody's like, well, you said the celebrity thing. Here's the difference. Pat McAfee works at WWE. And I see a lot of people saying uh, that Pat's Pat's really good, things like that. You know what Pat McAfee has working for him? He's got money. And the best thing in the world to have, and this is some financial advice from you, for you guys, mm. is to have what I like to call, and I'm not going to tell you what this stands for, but it's called F-U money. Now, what that is, is when your boss tells you something at work and you don't like it, you could get up and say, you know what? I got enough money. Uh, I don't need this today. Pat McAfee could get up in the middle of SmackDown one day and say, you know what? I'm going to go home and I'm going to go buy a horse. What, 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 what's, what's the problem here? I can do what I want. So he doesn't have to listen to Vince McMahon. I'm doing this because I think it's fun. That's where That's he's at. He's a fan and Vince knows that and he's got to be smart. But I think he also knows Theory needs this win more than him because Theory's on the active wrestling roster. He's a commentator right now with Michael Cole. He's he's made. He's good. Uh, <laughs> it did it did hurt a little bit when he said that because I was a, a big Tyler Breeze fan. He said, "I know that Tyler Breeze comment hit hard." Yeah, that, but this, Vince is on a decree right now. Everyone has to have a gimmick and things to sell with toys. So he's back in his eighties mind state. Very very corny. Very corny. Uh, Ace and Austin yeah, Theory. Another guy, totally... another guy who doesn't deserve to be on the mania, in my opinion. Mm. Ace says Austin Theory was totally better when he was in Evolve. That's when I first saw him, and I said, this dude's going to be a star one day. He was. He was. But sometimes. I think, I think right now this is the um, this is the you got to eat what you don't like. This is the prototype. You remember when Cena was going through all this stuff in the beginning? You got to eat some stuff sometimes in the beginning because they want to see if you're a company yeah. guy. But Cena, and, and this pains me too, because Cena is one of my most annoying figures ever too but you can see the signs with john cena even ruthless aggression john cena i'm not going to go as far back to prototype john cena because prototype john cena was in ovw pat mac um, um often theories on smackdown and raw so so he's on the big show with this gimmick it's not like he was this stupid phone carrying person down in some obscure whatever he's on the big show with this stupid gimmick right and my i call it stupid it's different than John Cena. John Cena, his first appearance on SmackDown on the big show was ruthless aggression, corny, but potential John Cena. I I, I it's a different story to me. To okay. me, to me, Austin Theory is trash, bro. Let, let's That's let's see what Austin Theory does. I'm gonna leave it at that for now. But I think it's time for everybody to shoosh. Oh, We've God. got the triple threat raw tag team title match. We've got RK Bro, the Street Profits, and Chad Gable and Big Otis. This one is this is something. This is something else. This one. Um, what what do you think for this tag team title match here? I, I don't really have a lot of build this, I don't have a lot to say about this. Have you seen how emotional and how high strung I've been through your entire show so far? Absolutely. With the exception of what? With the exception of um, the Usos and Rick and, and, and Boogs and, and Nakamura, and with the exception of what was the other one that was annoying that didn't make any difference? Corbin and McIntyre. This is the same thing for me. Okay. Uh, get, in, get into it. What are you doing then? What do What do you do for this one? Who wins? I, I guess RK Bro wins, but I I, I can't say that definitively because I also think they might break up, but. If I were a betting man, I'd say RK Bro wins. Um, 
but I don't care. And that's the problem. I don't care who wins because I'm not invested in this match. The Street Profits, I like the fact that they're looking like they're going to turn heel. I think that'll bode well for them in the future, but I don't think they win at WrestleMania. And I like Shush, I like them, but I don't like them enough for, to be, you know, again, it's, it's iffy whether or not these guys deserve to be on the show, much less win. So I say RK Bro wins by default. I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I have one fear, though, and it's Gable Stevenson. I keep hearing that he may come in, and I feel like this is going to steal shine from Chad Gable mm. if, if they give him a wrestler gimmick. Gable has been great. Yeah. And I know people get sick of me saying this. I think Chad Gable, he may not be Kurt Angle, but he's pretty close, bro. He's, he's got someone there who's got a lot of potential, but he has to be put in those spots like he gave Angle to shine to show, to learn. And he's never been given that, I feel, as as properly. Maybe because he's smaller than Angle. Maybe Mm -hmm. he hasn't earned it in their eyes. I don't know. But I think Chad Gable could be a much bigger player for the company than he is. I'm not saying he's a main eventer right now, but I'm saying he should be in a better position than he's in. I like. I I don't like him as much as you do, but I like Chad Gable. Um, I, I see potential. I see potential for Otis. I see potential for them as a team. Um, but I just don't, you know, I'm not blown away by them, though. No. Oh, Anthony's saying Randy turns on Riddle. Okay, you're that's a bull. I don't think I don't see that happening now. Yeah. Uh, took me a minute to notice, but RK, RK Bro's theme is a banger. I do like the theme as well. I do. RK Bro walks the same way, uh, they walked in. Okay, so Ace is saying they win. I would have loved RK Bro feud going into Mania, but the, uh, the team grew on me. Yeah, I feel like they were going to split them, and now they're like, you know what, keep them together. Makes Randy's workload a little bit easier. Keeps Riddle out of trouble. He's with a vet. Like, hey, don't screw up or and don't tweet so Goldberg. Many, so many things about this build, things that show that I would have done differently. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not Vince. I'm not Bruce Pritchard. I'm not any of these people who run the show. But you know, to me, it's just another example. This this triple threat match could be on Raw. This is the you know WrestleMania is supposed to be. I mean, not something you never see because it's just not, you know, it's too long of a year and there's too many shows to have no matches ever. You know, first time ever is a very difficult. But give me something that that whets my appetite and makes me say, like, yo, this is the only, I can only see this on WrestleMania. We could see the Street Profits and RK Bro and Alpha Academy on Monday. Like, it's not, it's not that, it doesn't mean anything, bro. I We've mean, seen uh, it too. huh? We've seen it probably. I think that's been a match. Isn't that oh. how they won the belts? You know what? You're probably. It's, it's sad that we don't even know anymore. Yeah, I'm not sure, but you're probably right. You're probably. No, no. You know what it was? They won the belts in the match against. Um... No, yes. It was. That was a triple. T- yes. Exactly. That, that, that's, that makes it even worse. That makes it even worse. And, don't, and again, I can't stress that. I know I'm going back on the card again, but the Nakamura and, and Boogs versus Usos thing, we could see that on SmackDown, bro. Like, we can see that on Velocity. We can see that on Heat. Like I said, those shows don't even exist anymore. And I'm pretty sure they've done some uh, one-on-one matches with that as well, which is another uh, sad piece. And, and um, let, let me throw this out there, too. Let me throw this – and, and I'm going to continue working if, if you don't mind. Can I throw this two cents in here real quick? Go ahead. I'm going to focus on the tag title matches, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extract Montez Ford, Randy Orton, Riddle, I'm going to extract Jey Uso just because he has a little bit of singles experience. I'm going to extract Shinsuke Nakamura. And I'm going to extract Chad Gable. That's six guys. Money in the bank. And then add um, – help me out, help me out. Help Butch? Me out. No, the, <laughs> the Intercontinental Champion Ricochet. Okay. Intercontinental ladder match. Razor Ramon Invitational Ladder Match. If me and you can do this, how come they can't do this? Now, you're telling me that that one match doesn't completely run circles around the two matches that we have? Listen, I'm with you, bro. You could even throw Finn Balor in there and have both belts hanging up there. You could have two winners for all we care. You know what I mean? That's what pisses me off. The fact that I could be sitting here in my office, and you can be sitting there in your office, and we can come up with this stuff, and the powers that be in WWE come up with Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boos against the Usos. 
Shout out to Rob in the chat. He said you'll probably see it again on it Monday. Probably will. It'll probably be a rematch the next night on Raw. It must be Monday. Yeah. It's gonna be oh, it's, and they're gonna and they're gonna bill it as a WrestleMania rematch. Uh Andy said, I think Gable and uh Bobby Stevenson, uh or Stevenson, I think that's supposed to be uh Stevenson. Stevenson. Right. Uh even even the odds with Brock and Roman. Okay. Okay, we'll get we'll get into some of those theories here in a second. Let let's run through. I, I don't have much to say about some of these other ones here. Women's tag team titles. I, I put this up here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I don't even know who I like for this. More entertaining than Usos versus Shinsuke and and Boos. Huh? This this match more is more entertaining than the SmackDown title match. Yeah, but who do you what who do you go with in this one? Like there's no build to this really either. So it's like who 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 do you win? Who do you have win this? I have I have the person winning, the same person you probably have winning because she deserves it and she needs deserves a WrestleMania win for the first time in her career. Oh, no, I I disagree. Oh, okay. And I'm a Sasha fan. Okay. I so think I'm you keep the Sasha streak going. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I, why I say that for Sasha is because she doesn't have to lose this match, but she can lose this match. Oh, sure. And why would I have her lose is because I would be selling her on the fact we're going to give you a bigger Mania moment because I want the storyline to be you've lost every year at WrestleMania. Yeah, but didn't they do that with the big show? Um, they, they did, did the- but I think you could do it better with Sasha. I think Sasha could tell a better story than that big show Cody garbage that they tried to do. Um, speaking of that, we'll still get to that. Okay. The, the whole the whole story here for me is build Sasha up to have that. So cancel them out. Liv and Rhea, I like the look of them as a team. If you're going to keep these tag titles around, I mean they're basically paperweights at this point. They really are. Um, but they're they're more relevant than the Intercontinental Belt right now. Carmella and Queen Zelina don't really need them, but it's giving them TV time. When you could travel back and forth on the show, who do you want on these shows? And Natalia and Shayna Baszler um, are on here. Shayna had a good run with Nia. Natty had the women's tag titles too, I believe, for a little bit. You know what? I'm just gonna say keep them on. No, no. Yeah. Uh, they they beat Rhea and Liv. I don't know, man. Keep them on Carmella and Queen Zelina until you have a, a, a better idea of what you want to do. I'm that's my answer. I I, I, I got to stick with what I said. I think Sasha's going to win. I think Sasha gets her chance to be a champion at WrestleMania the way she should have been um, a while ago. It's not the ideal situation. I thought that she should have been a triple threat match with um with uh, Charlotte and Ronda. That was the way I would have booked her. Yeah, six not feeling this mania. He feels like it's gonna be really bad. I I, I hate to that. I mean, it doesn't make me happy to say that, but that's what it's looking like. Yeah, yeah. See, Rhea and Liv was who I wanted to pick, Rob, but I just I can't say that definitively because they just like Rhea just had the belts, but this is different now, I guess. And he also said, "Forget these titles." I, I edited that for you. Now, I know. Uh, I know. I know we're both very, you're, you're, you know, it's common knowledge. You've said it on the air many times. You're a married man. I'm, I'm very involved as well. But the way um, Rhea has been co- uh, pinning people, like, <laughs> oh, crap. Like, like, that's some sexy stuff, man. Like, Rhea's taking it. The way she pins Zelina on Raw, good God almighty. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. No comment. No okay. comment. But I've been seeing a lot of screenshots on Twitter. Okay. The rest of the community. I thought it, I'm just saying it can't be just me who noticed that. Um, I want Rhea and Liv. Yeah, they like I said, they could do something. Aaliyah is someone who should be in the tag division. I'm surprised she doesn't have a, a match on here yet either. Are, but, they, are they doing a women's battle royal as part of Smack WrestleMania SmackDown? No, they definitely need to have a sensational invitational eventually. Well, but like, I don't think they'll do that for Sherry. Sensational invitational. That's freaking brilliant. See, this is this one. How come stuff like this is we should be booking WWE like that. Just they need to sign us to book the shows. Listen, as long as I can do it from home, Vince can pay me. Like, just give me two hundred k, bro. I got you, man. Just, just I'll holler at me. And bring me. Tell me who you want, and I'll, that's, I'll make this all make it. You and me. That's only different. I don't mind getting on a plane. I, I want to see the world. So, no, that's fine. I, I'm just not going to all these crazy shows. I, okay. I'm not trying to be in Vince's office at two a.m. with some crazy ideas. I've heard how he works. I feel you. Um. Let's let's get this one out the way. Yeah, I was critical of Butch. I'm still not feeling Butch. Why couldn't he just be Pete Dunn? He could have been Peter Shelby. You could have did something. You could have came up with a better name than Butch. 
Um, new days here. You got Sheamus, the the veteran, with Kofi and Woods, and then we got Rich Holland. What what are you thinking, bro? Just give me a pick, man. We can speed through some of these at this point. If New Day wins, I hope, but they'll probably do something stupid and have the other team win. This is a stupid match. I feel like they're going to try to establish yeah, um, the other are. team. So I think Butch will end up interfering and uh, giving them the the victory. So another another match that could be seen in. And I know I joked around about heat and velocity, which are no longer shows, but I mean this from the bottom of my heart. This match could be easily on the main event. Right. Uh, it provides the most leverage without being illegal. Look at the pictures for science. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Get out of here, justifying. There you go. I want Rhea to pin Sasha. Winfield. <laughs> Butch and Boogs. <laughs> that sounds like a rap CD. That's I'm someone selling me in my parking lot. I'm going to get in trouble with my girl for this Rhea talk. I got to chill. <laughs> uh. We here at Everything Pro Wrestling respect all women. Sorry, my hands are folded for the PR reasons. We we respect all women here, so let's be kind. I have not disrespected <laughs> any woman. I did not say anything disrespectful. I think that Rhea Ripley is a very attractive woman who happened to pin another very attractive woman. I am only a man. I am only flesh and bones. Do not judge me. Hashtag wrestling. Uh, I'm... I'm only interested in Roman Brock, the Owen Stone Cold segment. Edge AJ is either going to be really good or really bad. There is no in between, and I really hope Bianca wins that belt. Pretty much, be a good look if she doesn't. That is a fact. Sick. Um, moving on to the next match, I don't have this one written down because it was a late add-in. Because I, I actually do this early. So, uh, Bobby Lashley versus Omos. Not bad. Not horrible. No, I, I this is. Omos is by himself now. He this is his chance to shine. He's got to do something here. He's got to do something. You got to impress me. I think he needs to bust out a move from the repertoire. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's a power bomb. I don't know if it's a, a tope suicida. I don't know something. You got to give me something here. Maybe it's a, a Styles Clash off the top row. I'm tripping now. But Omos has to do something different is what I'm trying to say here. And Lashley, to me, I feel like you want to keep him strong too, though, because he's someone you may have to, hey, I need you to, to get in the main event scene. I think the more you talk, you're going directly where I'm going because I'm about to say what I think is going to happen. It's not going to be what you think. Uh-oh. Is it, does it involve my boy MVP? Because I'm asking, where's MVP? No, no, no. I, I mean, I hope he's on the show. Don't get me wrong. But I have nothing to do with MVP. I just think it's not going to be a win by either guy. Okay. What, what what do you see here? Double DQ, double count out, double something. I, I just think both guys stay strong. Both guys get their licks in, and then both guys don't lose. Okay. Yeah. I, I feel like you you have to find a way to keep both of these guys strong in this right. one. Right. Um, if you're forcing me to pick and you're like, give me, give me one of these two, um, I'm going to go with Lashley to find a way to pick up the victory. Okay. I think Omas may walk out on a count out and just say, you're not getting me right now as you're trying to build him up to, to be something more. Okay. Uh, we, we've got comments coming in. We got people saying Lashley wins. Um, I want to see Rhea get a big win. That's all. Uh, Bobby versus Omas. I can't, <laughs> I can't uh, wait to see this match that no one ever. Lashley versus Omas is Biggie's favorite big meaty men slapping meat. Omas will kip up. Omas is going to break them ankles if he, if he even tries. Uh, Omas is going to do a shooting star. Lord, please, do I, not I let that man even attempt that uh, move. Sick talking about how Bobby and um, and Omas um, can't wait to see this match said no one ever. That's true, but it's not – it's probably about on a scale of the other matches. It's like the fourth worst match. The fourth worst, meaning there's just three matches that are less interesting than that match. Yeah. Yeah, and this one was just put together quick, like, yeah. and it's more, and that's just what I'm saying. That this match is more interesting to me than the SmackDown titles, the Raw titles, and um, the New Day match, and the um, I'm drawing a blank, but that's three at least. Yeah, you you could go through a lot. Uh, let Let's get into speaking speaking of stuff done at the last minute. Omos needed a challenger. Uh -oh. And he was asking for people to step up, and nobody wanted to fight. Didn't Seth Rollins need a match that week, Sean? Uh -huh. Didn't he? Why couldn't he say, oh, my, let's have a match at WrestleMania, you versus me? He could have looked yeah. crazy doing that. Yeah, that would have been great. 
But instead, we're getting this buildup. Seth is facing a mystery man. Now, this is supposed to happen on night one. But I have a crazy theory for what could happen here. Crazy theory. Okay, okay. okay. You, I don't know if you want to go first or you want to let me get into the nah, crazy theory. I, I, I'm on pins and needles. I want to hear what you got to say. All right. So, listen. You could have Seth Rollins appear not only in night one with one match, but you could have him appear on night one and night two. (laughs) Hear me out. Hear me out. What if you had night one, you could tease people and say night one, Seth Rollins has his first big match and his opponent is here comes the money. Shane McMahon comes out. Because you you already told Shane that he was going to have this match. Remember what I told you about guys getting booed because they're not somebody else? Yeah. That's a, no, remember I told you earlier about how the only time a return gets booed is when they're hoping it's somebody else? Shane McMahon will get booed out of the building. Correct. But what if you you play this off, though, instead? Shane doesn't come out in his usual attire. Okay. Shane comes out in a business suit. Okay. And says, yeah, my father owed me this match, but I'm not doing that because I have a new client that works for me. Ooh. The lights go down. Ah, you know, you know, Cody. Cody better have the AEW entrance. That's all I'm going to say. Right. He better come out with Brandy, the dog, Arn. You better have all these little people running around in the Nightmare Family jackets. Right. You better do the whole thing and just bring it. And have Cody come out for to face Seth Rollins. And they have a match. Maybe this match doesn't go too long. Maybe it's a double, double knockout, double whatever you want it to be. Mm-hmm. And you could have it be a, a, a draw, whatever you want. Honestly, I would just give Cody the win and keep it moving. But then what do you do on night two with Cody? And you could keep it real simple. Cody beats Seth. Night two, Cody announces that on Monday Night Raw, I'm going to come out and speak for the very first time. But when I come out to speak, I want to address Vince McMahon to his face in the ring. You have to have a hook for Monday Night Raw, and that will be the hook and say, I want to speak to you, Vince McMahon, and I don't know what the angle would be because I'm not going to make it. I'm intrigued. Keep going. But but you could build intrigue because you're going to have him talk about AEW possibly in the ring with Vince McMahon. And people will say, what's going to happen with this? You bring some AEW fans back in. And I know a lot of people were like, man, I'm expecting you to hate on this because I'm an AEW guy. And they're like, oh, I I would expect you to hate this because Cody's going to be back and doing this, this thing. No, this makes things better. Cody, WWE needs something intriguing. You hear how the chat's talking about the show. You hear how Sean's talking about this is boring. They've got nothing going for them. You better scoop up some of these AEW talents when they become free. You better find a way to lure some of them over that you really like and want. Dangle that carrot. Reel them in. Because we need something fresh in WWE. The problem is no one trusts their writing at this point. Cody is your key to getting everything. Cody's your key. If you want MJF, he's still friends with Cody. If you want, uh, I, I'm trying to think of some other talents we've heard that they want. If you want Brian Cage, you could probably use Cody and get to him that way. If you want X, Y, and Z, you can get them from Cody. If you want it Red Velvet, Cody's got the key. He holds the keys to a lot of doors, but you can't screw up Cody then. Right. So the ball's in your court, WWE, because the moment you mess up, Cody's just going to look and just say, yeah, yeah, it was fun. Cool. Thanks for the money. See you later. (laughs) So you got to give him what he wants. What do you, what are you seeing for this match, Sean? Um, I mean, I I have a sneak, I mean, up until a couple days ago, I thought it was going to be Cody versus um, Seth, but now I'm thinking it's going to be a really disappointing. Yeah. I think it's going to be a really disappointing thing. And I, and I'm and the problem is I'm a huge Shane McMahon fan. Like I've always been a major fan of Shane O'Mac, but I think it's going to work out negatively. I think Shane's going to come out, and I think we're going to get through WrestleMania. I think we're going to get through both nights of WrestleMania, and Cody Rhodes is going to be nowhere to be found. I hope I hope I'm wrong. I Listen, hope I'm, wrong. I'm holding out hope until the Raw after Mania. If I don't see Cody by Raw after Mania, this ship has sailed. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. 
Because the whole world knows he signed already. It's common knowledge he signed. So when they were trying to get Stone Cold, Cody's the Cody news overtook that. Yes, it did. That so that's the hot ticket. You gotta go for the hot hand if you can. Um, this will lead to Cody versus Theory. LOL. Somebody said Melinda Ford said there's news going around that Cody could be pulled out of WrestleMania. I actually heard that rumor as well. I'm hoping it's not true. Marco Stunt beats Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. Where is that guy? Who, Marco? Yeah. Uh, Marco's contract is quietly being kind of, once it's out, they're going to just release him after. I think they just recently told him. Gotcha. According to the uh, sheets. Uh, people say, here comes the money. Yeah, Cody's coming back to WWE after helping start up WWE's biggest rival, AEW. is probably the most interesting out of all this. I think they're going to waste him, though. Goodbye, Cody. Hello, Stardust. You know what? People, people keep and it's funny. He said, "Big shout out to um to Sick for saying that." But like, honestly, I think people are over over over. I'm I'm saying that correctly. Overestimating WWE. There's no guarantee that Cody. Like Cody, the only thing that's on paper is how much he's getting paid. I don't think Cody. I don't think Vince McMahon is ever going to give anybody creative control. I, I don't think built, Vince McMahon's built that way. And I'm telling you that there's a distinct problem, except maybe Brock Lesnar. But at the end of the day, who knows? Like you can see Cody Rhodes be dashing, or or you can see Cody Rhodes be um, stardust again. I don't put anything past Vince. You never know. Like I said, you have to do this right though, or you're never gonna get anybody to come over to your side. Got to do it right. And Cody, and you know what? And I feel, I'm disappointed in Cody too. Like I feel like Cody. We all talk about you know you sold out, you sold out. It goes all the way back to the NWO and and Scott and Kev going to WCW, but this is a real sellout to me. To me, Cody Rhodes was misused and under underutilized and underappreciated in WWE for years, and then he leaves and essentially not not legitimately, but essentially in theory helps build well no not even in theory in, in actuality he helped build AEW he wasn't really like a you know the owner or anything but I think he was a legit executive VP I think he had legitimate pull in the back um he built AEW created and, and then you go back to the, the company that that um that misused you like he kind of did sell out agreed and and I wonder what what could have enticed him and and six that I want to know what happened to cause him to jump ship. Me too. Me too. Somebody said just don't let it be Seth versus Oldberg. I think if anyone other than Cody comes out, Sean has articulated it perfectly. They're getting booed. You are going to get dumped on no matter what. So if Vince calls you, just know you're taking the check, get in your car and go home. Cause you're and don't look on Twitter or social media that day because there ain't nobody loving you. They're gonna be like, Whoa. Remember when Rey Mysterio came out as number 30 in, in 2015? That poor man got booed and he did nothing wrong. He was like, What's up, y'all? New mask, you're not Brian Danielson. Get out of here. Cody wrote the way the way you know it's 2022, we all have access to the internet, and especially people like myself, Conrad, you know, we, we do our homework, we take it very seriously. We look into these things. We 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 scroll the the rumor mills, and then it became common out. Cody is. Let's make this perfectly clear right here on EPW. Cody Rhodes does belong to WWE right here and now. He is signed to WWE. It, make no mistake about that. Them not bringing him out at WrestleMania is just a decision that's just going to piss people off. It's not if. Cody is WWE right now. So it's just a concerted effort on Vince's or whoever's part to not bring them out if they don't bring them out. Right. Uh, e saying Cody saw the writing on the wall with Punk, Cole, and Danielson and people coming in. It's way easier to get the strap in WWE with all the middle-aged guys, part-time and prone guys. This is this this is about money. And maybe it's maybe Cody money. didn't money. It's it's money or creative. It's always that usually. Um, no, but I can't even believe it's creative, bro. I can't believe that that Khan was that much. If Con, let's say Khan and Cody did have problems, right? They couldn't have had problems that bad. They couldn't have had problems to the point where Cody. Uh, what was Cody going to be fighting on the opening match every single night? There's no way that Khan had those kind of problems created. It was all about the money. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he thought he was going to get a bigger contract, but Punk came in. 
Danielson came in, Adam Cole came in. This started to change the game. This is why some people started are getting released now. The mm-hmm. talent pool is better. He's going to have to pay more money if these guys become available, and he can't just keep holding on to people. This is business. I, like, and, I also, and I also want to be fair, Conrad, and I want to say, you know, because I'm a fan of Cody, even though I'm saying he sold out, but that doesn't mean I'm any less of a fan. If Cody Rhodes sat down at the negotiating table and Khan wrote down a number that was just insulting to Cody Rhodes, then you have to do what you have to do. You still have a family to feed. You have a new baby. You have a wife. You have a family to feed. I'm never going to knock anybody from putting food on their family's table, okay? But I can't imagine that Khan would write down a number that would be insulting to Cody Rhodes. I mean, yeah, Cody, here's 75 grand. I doubt it. I, I, I just doubt it. Right. Um, people are saying the EVPs were getting paid. Cody had like three reality shows. How much money do you need? Someone said, I don't think it's all about money. All the money he probably inherited from his father, plus his indie money. I think it's a respect thing with Cody and Khan. Could be that, too. I mean, we don't know. It's and I'm sure one day we'll hear it. It's a respect thing with Cody and Khan, but I think it's a respect thing as far as the number that was written down, written down on that figurative table that he slid across. And, and and he opened up that piece of paper and he did not like what he saw. Can I can I put another business thing out here? We're going to get to the main event after this, guy, so don't worry. But the last thing I want to say is, remember the rumors of there were beef amongst the EVPs? I think that's been certified, signed, and sealed, notarized at this point. Because Kenny and Matt Jackson were liking tweets where they were showing Cody saying, I want to be in AEW forever. I told Tony Khan this is the place where I want to be. And they were liking those. And rumors said they all had beef with each other. And Cody was the odd man out. Like, he wasn't in the elite anymore. But those three still stuck together. Very, very funny how that happened. And that's when they all started to lose power within it. And Tony Khan said, I'm taking this from you guys because I don't know what's going on with some of these things. Right. Interesting. Possible. I just, if I were a betting man, I would not believe that Cody left basically the house that Cody built over anything short of an insult. It would have to be an insulting offer for Cody. I believe Cody got an insulting, disrespectful, in his mind, disrespectful offer and said, okay, I have to feed my family. I have to go. Right. Kong offered him a handshake and a hot dog. I think Cody felt he could have gotten more credit for AEW. I've heard rumors of that, too, that they don't like uh, all the titles Tony puts on his name. I mean, hot dogs are good, somebody said. Listen, it's main event time. We got to talk about it. It's the match that I think everybody's uh, buzzing for. It's the unification. I think that's what it still is for both of these titles. That's what I'm hearing. Um, yeah, but I've heard rumors that it's not like they're going to keep two belts still. I don't know what they're doing here. Okay, okay. But Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar. This is the biggest match you could probably do right now. And this is the third time. This is getting the Austin Rock treatment, Sean. You don't see that too often where you see a match happen like three times. No, you don't. And 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 like I said earlier this evening on your show, it had to be something that they brought to the table that would make it worth three times. You know, Austin Rock won. Uh, great analogy, by the way, Conrad. Austin Rock won was just basically the two young stars. Austin wasn't particularly young, but the two number one and number two guys in the industry going one on one. It made sense. They both came up together in WWE. They fought at WrestleMania 15. 17 was supposed to be Rock's redemption, but it turned out to be Stone Cold. You know, turning on him, it was no DQ. It was Texas. Even though I didn't like how that match ended, it was it still made sense. Austin Rock 3 was about Rock's redemption, finally getting Rock's redemption, and beating Stone Cold in his final match. All three matches, for whatever purpose, made sense. Um, people fail to realize, Conrad, and I'm sure you have, but just in case you haven't, People don't understand that Roman Reigns has never beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. No, no. And that's kind of been the story. Right. His family was there for the first one. And I like this dynamic, too, because it's finally reversed. Now it's, oh, you're the bad guy in this situation instead of uh, Brock. So this this is going to make things quite interesting. Yeah. I think this is going to be one of those slobber knocker type matches. I think it's going to have to be hard hitting and they're going to have to keep it a stack. I would even appreciate if maybe Brock did a little more wrestling than usual in this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when the match was first announced uh, and we saw the kind of writing on the wall, on the wall um, 
when it looked like it may be a unification situation. Some of us were a little bit skeptical because um, because it would take one title out of the picture as it relates to another title match. Um, you know, there will not be a WWE title match and a univer universal title match. It'll be both together, uh, which kind of adds or takes away from the steam of the card, which is already severely lacking in the first place. But they've decided to pull the trigger, and they had to. Brock Roman three had to have something that neither – match brought forth the last two times and this is a unification match and it is historic it's only the second unification match in wwe wrestlemania history okay um and you have an opportunity to to make some waves i think roman wins um i think roman establishes re-establishes himself as the number one guy in the industry and that's saying a lot because i have a lot of respect for the adam coles and the the hangman pages and and the you know, Dean Ambrose's or John Moxley's and things of that nature. But I think Roman Reigns is the number one guy in the business. And I think he wins. Um, and I think it reestablishes the WWE title as the number one title in the industry because it'll be over Roman Reigns' shoulder. Okay, I'm seeing. I, so you're saying Roman's walking out in the end? I do. I, I'm going to agree with you 100%. And Six got the, the moment, and I know Derek has mentioned this to me a million times. Derek has the promo in his head what The Rock's going to say. He said Roman Reigns wins, cuts a promo saying there's nobody left to smash. He's the head of the table and tells everyone to acknowledge him. And then the Rock's music hits. That's the only thing that'll save this WrestleMania. And he could come out and say, you're not the head of anything with my family. I'm the head of the table. I'm the reason you're here where you are. You could go into that. And that could be your main event for WrestleMania 39. Um do I see that happening? No. I do not hype myself up on any Rock rumors anymore because it's just – it's not worth it at this point. But here's what I will say. Until you have somebody who you are ready to put the title on and take off of Roman Reigns, and I think it's got to be someone who's going to become a bigger deal than they already are. Um, maybe it's a Braun Breaker. I don't, I don't know. Whoever they view as like the future of this company could do it. But make sure they're ready because I'm not taking the belt off of Roman Reigns until then. He's about to possibly go on. What is? Would this be a three-year now? This would be the beginning of his third. No, November. No, whatever it was. Payback. The summer of 2020 is when he won the title. Yeah, and we're at 2022. I Listen, I'm telling you, he might go three years with this title if it was up to me. Like, let him run. I think the problem is that we don't really have a choice. Um, Brock is the only legitimate threat. And for obvious reasons, Brock loses. I think that makes sense storyline-wise. And, and there's nobody else. So... You know, and by the way, the Drew McIntyre thing, I've argued this with, with, with Malik many times. Drew McIntyre is not on the level of either one of these guys. It's just not a fact. 2020 was his year. I'm sorry that the pandemic got in the way. Drew McIntyre is not on this level. He is not the guy, okay? So let's just get that out the way. And there's nobody. There's really nobody else. There's nobody else. The Randy Orton's, not really anymore. I mean, they could rebuild them, but, you know, been there, done that. Roman is the man, okay? And Rock coming back is really not going to change that because Rock's not going to take the title from him because Rock's never going to be full-time again. Um, right. Cody could be fresh, but you, you you may have to look at NXT. You're building up some of these guys. I see they have high hopes for Braun Breaker. They have high hopes for a Carmelo Hayes. Maybe it could be him. There's, there's guys who you're going to have to look at and just say, where do I see you and what do I want you to end up doing for this company? I agree. I agree. I, I think, and I, and I want to say, I think that the Rock... Um, I don't want to. I want to acknowledge Sick for saying this too, but uh, I I promise you it was in my head as well. I'm not going to go as far as say they he congratulates them or or joins the group, but what I think is what I think is going to happen is that Rock's going to come out. Rock's going to raise Roman's hand, similar to Royal Rumble 2015, and I think that Roman's just going to give him a look, like it's going to be. It's not going to be a look of thank you for raising my hand, Rock. Thank you for the congratulations. I think Rock's going to legitimately raise Roman's hand and in celebration of his cousin being the man and Roman's just going to look at him like, yeah, thanks for raising my hand, but you're still in my thunder, buddy. And that's going to plant the seeds. Interesting. So you're saying a play off the Royal rumble when he raised his hand. Yes, sir. And, and also a play uh, off of the mega powers when Hogan was trying to be nice to macho, but macho under his, under the skin was kind of exactly. We all know who the baby face was in that. I see the lust in your eyes, Hogan. Would you like would you like my WrestleMania five? It's gonna take less than two minutes. My WrestleMania five, the way it should have been. Macho yeah. Man should have won that match. 
I'm with you. I'm with you. Macho Man should have won. But no, it's gonna be and, and I want everybody, I challenge everybody on this on this wonderful show that's listening right now and who will be listening in the future to please go and watch Survivor Series 1988. And it'll give you an exact depiction of the type of hand raise and look that I'm talking about. Macho and Hogan had just won the Survivor Series. Hogan raises Macho's hand with Elizabeth in between them. And Macho is giving Hogan a look that does not seem like, hey, I'm happy you're raising my hand. That's what I'm talking about. It's going to be a very subtle, very, if Rock shows up, a very subtle, like, innuendo. And it's going to be where Roman thinks, hey, this is my moment. What are you doing here? And it's going to plant the seeds. Right. And, and what I love, too, with that, with the Savage and Hogan thing was every pay-per-view, there was something slightly did eliminate him from the Rumble. Yes. And it was he, he helped Elizabeth up and put Elizabeth yes. on, and he watched the hand placement, like, why are you touching my girl's yeah. back? Yeah. Touch my girl's booty. You, you was a little too close, bro. What yes. you doing? That's what I'm talking about. See, I knew you'd get it. I knew you'd get it. And and Rob's dude, honestly, this top five greatest storylines ever in WWE history. Yeah. Um, Rob says Hayes, Grimes, and Steiner are the only guys worth investing in your time down in NXT these days. Uh oh, Matt Lopez says I've seen SummerSlam 88. Let's go. Let's go. But listen. Not only have you seen SummerSlam 88, but I think you guys need to subscribe to Hubbard Wrestling Weekly. He covers all of combat sports. If you're into boxing like I am, uh, Sean is my number one primetime guy to listen to talk boxing. He gets great analysis, has interviews with a bunch of people. you got to go check out his channel for that. Um, he's part of Fight the Fight team. He does giveaways, uh, podcasts for them as well. He's doing a lot of great work out there, so please go to his YouTube channel, subscribe to his audio platforms, and support this brother, man. I, I thank you for that. I'm I'm, I'm truly humbled um, by that. I, I get real loud and real excited when we're talking about this stuff, but I get real quiet and real humble when you big me up like that. I'm just a humble man, trying, you know, using the gift God gave me. I, I love I love the sport. Um, I love combat sports. Um, I'm a fan. That's where it all got started, just like how you got started. And I'm just trying to share love with the people, man. So thank you so much. But this is our WrestleMania preview and predictions. I look forward to it. We're going to try to bring you guys a review on Saturday and Sunday following the shows. Uh, we will be up for that. We're still discussing Monday Night Raw. We should be able to uh, do a review for that one because it's the Raw After Mania. And I'm telling you guys now, if you're not subscribed to the audio versions of the show, please do that. You may get a little ROH Super Connor pre uh, Super Card. A review afterwards if i got some time maybe i'll talk some dynamite maybe we'll get some nxt in there um, but if i'm able to do it it's just going to go out on those it'll probably be something short so make sure you guys are subscribed to the audio platforms for myself and my partner in crime in this one uh mr sean hubbard of wrestling hubbard wrestling weekly we are out thank you for joining us one <laughs>